Thank you for joining us on the newsroom this afternoon. I am Abisola Adebayo. Sokoto State Governor Aminu Tambo has relaxed the curfew imposed as a result of the violent protests that showed the arrest of suspects linked to the murder of Deborah Samuel. Deborah, a 200 level student of the Sheo Shagari College of Education, was lynched and burnt to death by an angry mob last week after being accused of blasphemy. In a swift reaction, the police authorities arrested two suspects linked to the murder, which resulted into a violent protest that led to several loss of properties. Worried by this situation, Governor Tambua declared a 24-hour curfew within the metropolis to prevent the protest from spreading further. But in a statement on Monday, the Commissioner for Information and Orientation, Isa Banjini, said Governor Tambua has released has relaxed the curfew after receiving a briefing from security agencies in the state. The Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Talen, has withdrawn from the senatorial race to retain her ministerial position. Talen made this known in a statement released on Monday morning. The minister, who had purchased the All Progressives Congress form to contest the Plateau South senatorial election, has now rescinded her ambition. Talen explained that she came to the decision after consultations with her constituents and thought it wise to withdraw from the race. She also added that she is yet to resign from her position as the Minister of Women Affairs. Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC, Ifedayo Adetifa, has advised Nigerians to avoid bushmeat to prevent monkeypox. The DG, who spoke in a television interview, said though there have been sporadic cases of monkeypox in the country, there is no outbreak. He explained that since the emergence of monkeypox in Nigeria in 2017, there has only been 558 cases with eight deaths, adding that only 46 suspe suspected cases have been reported in 2022 with no death. Adetifa, however, said Nigerians should interact with animals with care, adding that failure to do so may pose risk to health security of the citizens. Meanwhile, amid widening lockdowns, China's jobless rate has risen to 6.1% in April, the highest level since the 6.2% peak seen in the early part of the COVID-19 pandemic in February 2020. Official figures also show retailers and manufacturers were eat hard. Full or partial lockdown were imposed in dozens of cities in March and April, including a long shutdown of the commercial center Shanghai. Chinese authorities recently described the country's employment situation as complicated and grim following the worst outbreak of the virus since 2020. The Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, has warned the public of an ongoing cyber vulnerability that allows a nearby hacker to unlock vehicles, start engines wirelessly and make away with cars. In a statement over the weekend, Ikechukwu Adinde, NCC's Director of Public Affairs, said the notice was in accordance with the latest advisory released by the Computer Security Incidents Response Team of the Commission. The statement also explained that the latest type of cyber attack can manipulate the captured commands and retransmit them to achieve a different outcome altogether. On the foreign scene, there were huge celebrations in Mogadishu as residents welcomed the election of the new Somalia president, Hassan Sheikh Mohamud. Somalis living in Nairobi, in neighboring Kenya, also welcomed the news with celebrations. Mohamud won with 214 votes in a third round of voting against the incumbent Mohamed Abdullahi Famajo, who got 110 votes. He was, however, sworn in shortly after the final results were announced and will now serve for the next four years. In sports, Super Falcons forward Aziza Tushuala emerged as the top scorer of the Spanish women's Premier Division with 20 goals. Her team, Barcelona Femeni, won the league and finished the league season unbeaten with 13 wins in 30 games. The team scored 159 goals altogether. They ended the season on 90 points, 24 points more than second placed Real Sociedad. Well, that's all on the newsroom at this time. Thank you for watching.